Now let's take a look at Clint. Let's look at him from the front, the side, and from the back. I start with the base of support. Is his weight evenly distributed over both sides? Unequal weight distribution could also affect alignment of the trunk and the head. Are the trunk and head in midline? From the front, it looks like Clint sits fairly symmetrically. When we look at Clint from the side, it's easier to see the position of the pelvis. When patients sit in a posterior pelvic tilt, as Clint does, it often affects the position of the head and the upper trunk. Looking at Clint from the back, I can now observe more asymmetries. I notice a crease on the right side of his neck. I also note that his left shoulder is higher than the right. The left scapula is more pronounced than the right. And his left upper extremity is in slight abduction and internal rotation. I also make observations while the patient moves. I call these dynamic observations. The information quickly becomes more complex. If problem areas are subtle in the static position, it's often easier to see them as the patient begins to move. As we gather information during dynamic observations, we continue to follow the same procedures, but now we'll add a few more things as we observe how the patient moves. First, what is the quality of their movement? In other words, does the patient move with selective, isolated control? Or are the movements more in a pattern? What movement or combinations of movements is the patient able to do? I usually look proximal first and then more distal. I continue to look from the front, the side, and the back. It is also helpful during my evaluation to ask them to move their sound side. I can then compare the movement of the two sides.